is uh, Sonia Pazdarova with some comics in the classroom. Sounds like loads of fun. All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks a lot for coming to my session. In my 10 minutes, I would like to share some activities uh, I do with my low-level students. I'm going to show you a few ideas how to use comic strips in class. Uh, comics is a great genre for several reasons. First, you use authentic stories with low levels because they provide a lot of visual support. Uh, the next, uh, it's easy to adapt them in various ways, and I will show you how. Besides, they're fun and captivating. And there's no limit concerning uh, genres. They range from superheroes to adaptations of classics. Even Shakespeare has been turned into a comic. And there are no limits for levels either. What I have prepared um, for you today are activities which are suitable for elementary and pre-intermediate students. I've tried them out with my young learners class uh, who were false beginners, so even a lower level. Um, and the kids enjoyed them and they worked really well. So my objectives in this session where um, to practice skills such as reading, speaking, and writing on the one hand, and also to help the students apply what they have already learned on the other. And what's more, uh, since I don't use adapted comic strips, I also help the students establish the first contact with authentic material. And I said that if what the students do is purposeful and entertaining, it can be really a really good incentive to explore a foreign language a bit more. There are a few things that uh, you should bear in mind uh, if you're looking for a material. First of all, uh, it's really helpful if your comic strip has a clear storyline. Um, or if there is a clear development in the plot. Because if the frames show different actions, your students can build up on them. Further uh, is the language. If you use uh, non-adapted versions, make sure that the language is not too challenging and you don't have to spend ages pre teaching the language. And finally, it is the student's interest. You're definitely going to uh, choose different types of comics for very young uh, children and for business English students. Now my first activity. In my first activity, uh, I'm going to work with the visual forms and the lines separately. Here you can see a Garfield comic in the first slide, where, as you can see, the dialogues have been erased. But you may notice that two of them are remaining. As I have said, this activity comes from my uh, level one plus class. So I decided to leave something as a support for my students. Now I'm going to tell you what I did in the lesson. I prepared two different comic strips. Here you can see only one of them. And I gave them out to my students. I asked them to describe uh, to others what was happening in the pictures and how the characters were feeling. Here you can also prepare a questionnaire if your students are not willing to ask. Or you can elicit one on the board and then your students can ask. Uh, this stage where you focus on speaking is important because you help your students process the story. And also, you can supply them with the language they might need for the following stages. So if there is some difficult vocabulary, here's the perfect moment to explain it. So uh, if your students look at a comic strip like this, so they can, for example, say, Garfield looks really happy, um, he's taking a teddy bear into his bed, and so on. So when, uh, when my students this, uh, finish describing this comic strip, uh, I asked them to complete the, uh, the speech bubbles with what they think the characters were saying. In this stage, uh, the students practice the writing because they need to come up with some appropriate language for the situations. They, they don't need to produce anything elaborate. Uh, it needn't be very long. Just you should make sure that what the characters are saying corresponds with the pictures. 
So now you can see what uh, one of my I hope it's readable. Uh, in the first slide, uh, Garfield is saying, Cookie, you're my best friend. In the second one, come to me. In the third one, you're the best. Uh, in the following one, so go to sleep. And here are some interjections for sleeping and snoring. And here you have the last slide. So I think that um, here in this comic strip, we have fulfilled the goal. Now, uh, when the students finish completing the stories, they can get together, they can read the stories and discuss them. Uh, as a follow-on activity, I gave the students cards with the original lines, which I have here. As I had pairs of students who had different stories, I could challenge them a bit and be a bit nasty. So I gave them lines jumbled up. So what you can see here are uh, lines from two different comic strips. Which do you think uh, belong to the Garfield one? Can you type it in into the chat box? Any ideas? Yeah, hugs and diet. Yes, that's very, that's very like Garfield. Yeah, so here you can check it with the original one. All right. Now my next activity is going to be a bit about uh, predicting and creative writing. This time, I cut out the first picture. Oh, sorry. Here's the procedure that I did in the following one. Yeah, so I had the preparatory stage, the main part of the activity, and then the last line was uh, the follow-up activity. So now, let's move on to my second activity. So, as I've said, I cut out the first pictures of the story. Uh, I placed them separately. If you want to do something even trickier, you can choose the last one or the middle picture of a comic strip. Again, you can see Garfield here. Each student got each picture and described what they saw there. If you let them think about it for a, for a moment, describe the setting and the mood, it can, offer some, it can offer some guidance in the actual writing. For instance, as you can see, Garfield is quite grumpy in the first picture, whereas he, he looks really pleased with himself in the second one. Then I elicited ideas what the stories could be about and wrote suggestions on the board. Now, what do you think that can happen? Can you write that in the chat box, please? Uh, I can see something coming here. All right. OK. So for example, it's quite clear that uh, the first picture would be something about food and eating. And the second one is really open. Maybe Garfield is contemplating about cats, but you can leave it up to the students. Now, what I did next? I used the first picture, and then I drew some empty frames. Because the activity was a new type of activity, I haven't done it before with my students, I gave them more support. And after drawing these empty frames, I asked them for suggestions that could go in each of them. So there is a development in the plot. Again, I put the notes on the board to exemplify it. The aim of this extra help is that some of your students might be shy or less imaginative. And in this way, there's always something they can lean on. Uh, your stronger students can create their own stories, of course. Now, uh, what's essential is that the prompting concerns ideas and not the language. 
so your students remain independent in that area. So now, what my students did? So here is one of the slides uh, showing the second picture. And another one, uh, I suspect that it was the first picture about the diet. So the students uh, made a story, completed, with, completed it with dialogues. Right. As a follow-on uh, activity, you can ask the students to vote for a story which they like best. And an interesting conclusion can be uh, a comparison of the students' stories and the original ones. Yeah, so the original ones are here. So this is really different, but doesn't matter. In the second one, the students predicted quite a lot of ideas from the original story. Uh, when you have a collection of the students' pictures, uh, it can also serve as prompts for speaking activities, where you practice describing differences and similarities, where you practice instructions, or when you practice a grammar point. Now we can have a look at a summary of what I did. So again, you have the introductory phases, the main activity, and some suggestions to follow on. So my aims in these presentations were to suggest how you could use comic strips to practice skills and working with authentic materials. My first activity showed speaking, writing, how speaking, writing, and reading can be incorporated. And, then, and my second one focused on creating stories and practicing skills at the same time. So that's the conclusion from me. Thank so thanks thank you very much for your so ideas. Much. I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot of Garfield and for listening and a lot of to me. Uh, in the, in the